In this episode, we're going to explore techniques involving the MIDI input menu. The first concept is step time recording. In some cases, it may be quicker to enter pitches using a MIDI keyboard versus using the on-screen interface. To do this, make sure your track is record enabled and select program pitch from the MIDI input menu. Step time recording takes place within the loop markers. I can move the loop to a different location and record there. The step window displays the current step and you can use the arrows underneath to navigate among the steps. Programming velocities work the same way. Select Program Velocity from the MIDI input menu and switch to the velocity sequence lane so we can see the result. You can program pitch and velocity at the same time with the program both setting. Here is the pitch lane. Now I'll switch over to the velocity lane. With loop points set to one pulse, Mono Sequencer effectively becomes a MIDI input pulser. We could use Transpose to do the same thing, but what if I want my sequencer to be gated by my key presses? There is a function for that too. Select Transpose plus Gate under the MIDI input menu. So, in addition to transposing the sequence, Mono Sequencer only plays when I'm holding a key down. Sometimes, especially if I'm gating the output with the keyboard, I want to guarantee Mono Sequencer always starts at the beginning of my loop. Currently, the Mono Sequencer loop always picks up where the sequence left off. So to achieve this, I'm going to set the reset behavior to MIDI. Now every time I press a key, the loop starts at the beginning. Let's use the repeat lane to simulate a slapback echo effect. First, set MIDI input to off. Switch to the repeat lane. Now just click the up arrow once, and we'll throw in an occasional roll. Set MIDI input to transpose, and now you're free to improvise. 